You know, some time ago, I did a review of the Kedodobo UC, which was a robot spirits figure from Tamashii Nations and Bandai. This is, of course, the mecha version from Kedorogunso, and this is a super cool figure. I've always rather liked it, and I've even debated getting other figures from the line. It might not be the most popular line of figures, because Kedoro is a little bit older now, but still, I find it fascinating when I find merch of it. Now, before I bought that figure, I had actually bought this model kit. This is very similar. This is the Kedorobo as well, Mark II. And this is another Bandai model kit, and this apparently celebrates the Kedoro Gunso 20th anniversary. I picked this up at a Barnes & Noble for like $15, I think. It's a pretty cheap kit. I think the suggested Japanese price is something like $10, which is dirt cheap if you want a quick kit to play around with. But I don't know, I've never opened it and played around with it. This is apparently from 2019, and it even lists Bandai Spirits on the bottom of the box. Now, in addition to coming with the actual mech, it comes with some additional forms that you can put it into as well, as well as a little figure itself of Kerodo. So, since I don't have too much going on, I'd like to open this and see just how great it is. For 10 bucks, can we expect an amazing model kit? Well, let's find out. Now inside of the box, there's a few bags here with runners. We've got instructions, of course, with some additional advertisements for the different modes, as well as even this that shows some cute little animation images, as well as, I guess, more instructions. This one here is for the figure of Kerodo. It's not a ton of instructions, which is nice because this looks relatively simple. So let's go ahead and look at the runners. There's not a ton here, and obviously enough, this is a simple kit, so it doesn't have a lot of detail or anything like that. You're going to want to probably paint this, but I don't have that kind of time today, so we're just going to put this thing together and see how good it looks vanilla right out of the box. So Kerodo himself draws from these two main green runners, which are most of his parts, but then of course he has some accessories as well as his eye plates and his hat are also here. So there's not a lot going on for him, and it looks rather simple. And yeah, I guess we'll put that all together first. But hilariously, he has an additional little tiny body, I'm assuming for when you want to put him in the mech, which is just adorable, but his head is going to be incredibly out of proportion. The mech seems to have, honestly, not that many pieces whatsoever. There's only two main runners in here that I think you're drawing all of the pieces for the mech off of, so it doesn't seem that complicated at all. But rather than have you guys watch me put this thing together, I'm just going to go ahead and do that, and we'll come back to it completed. Okay, so it's been a little over an hour, I would say, and I've got the full kit ready to go. This is, of course, the Kero Robo itself. This is the mech suit that is pretty much the main attraction of the kit. And I gotta say, it's really nice. Now, I didn't do any painting or anything like that. I actually did use some of the decals, which I'm ashamed to say, but they do help just a little bit. But I do think that once this thing would be panel lined and properly painted, it would be an awesome little kit. It's got a surprisingly nice amount of detail. And of course, all of these little details could be painted just a lot better than you could ever put decals on them. And it does come with a decent amount of decals, but I only put the ones on that, you know, weren't too obtuse. Obviously enough, there's some things that have no coloring, which look really bare, but I really don't have the time to be painting this thing entirely. Still though, it has really decent articulation and quite a bit of accessories, so let's start going over that now. The arms start on ball joints here, which actually have the ability to go in and out. As you can see, this little piece right here allows it to go in and out, and that is for some transformation. But of course, that ball joint can rotate and roll around as much as you need it to, which is good. Now, the elbow is, of course, part of two hinge joints, really, where it can bend just slightly at the white piece. And then, of course, where the green piece is, it can bend even more. The hand is just a very simple fist, which has a hole in it for his gun, which is on a ball joint just plugged directly into his wrist. And of course, that ball joint can roll around and do all that good stuff. The waist is where the head here connects to this weird pelvis, and it can be turned side to side. And as you see, there's a sticker right inside this little mouth here, because that was a detail that I was not going to be able to paint. There's a little sticker here on the crotch too, which looks fine, and in the back, Surprisingly enough, there is a little flap on the back of the unit here, which allows for some transformation. So, the head can turn side to side at the waist, I guess you would call it. And then, of course, the legs are both on simple peg joints, which can go in and out. 
and you can swivel those just as you need to, but not too much more beyond that. Though, inside of the leg here, there is a ball joint which allows the top portion of the leg to move around rather freely. The knee also has the ability to hinge at either portion of the white or the green, and the ankle is similarly on a ball joint as well, which allows it to move quite freely. But that ball joint is in a little hinge joint as well, which allows for some in and out, but I'm assuming that's more so for transformation too. Overall, the articulation is pretty great, I'd say. I'd say it even rivals the Robot Spirits one a little bit. He comes with this simple shield as an accessory, as well as this blaster too, which is pretty comical with the big red tip on it. And those can be moved around for some transformation stuff as well. But for the most part, they do what they need to. The shield is in dire need of painting, but I wasn't going to be able to do all that. These are also decals too, which I really didn't like, but they do add so much more rather than having it just being plain white. So, you know, paint those if you can. I do like the red accents, though, in both the gun and, of course, the star on his head. It's kind of a shinier plastic, which looks really good. But besides the robot, there's quite a few other things that come with him, such as this hilarious little Kerodogunso, which is pretty decently sized. Measuring the two would show you that the Kerodobo is just about four and a half inches tall, while Kerodo himself is about four inches. So, pretty nice. And this Kerodo is actually decently articulated as well. He comes with this cute little stand, which you don't have to keep him on. You can pull him right off of that at any time because he has a little peg in his foot, which goes into the stand. And the stand even has a little plaque that reads his name. But I was actually really surprised by this. The only thing that sucks is that his eyes are one gigantic sticker. And because of that, since they're going over a concave piece of plastic, you can see that they crinkle up a bit, which looks really crappy. But whatever, I could always take them off and maybe just paint in the details myself but I probably won't because this was a cheap kit. The star on his belly is also a decal as is the star on his hat. But speaking of his hat, let's start with articulation up here because his flaps of his hat can actually go in and out. His arm is on a ball joint. And like I said, you can actually unplug these pieces because he does have additional arms. One of them is actually this little posable arm, which once you plug in, you can actually bend it at the elbow on a simple hinge. I mean, it's nothing to write home about, but it's great for something that they really didn't have to include because this thing's just about as big as the robot itself. So, you know, you get what you pay for. Now, his arms are also on ball joints as well, so they can swivel around and do what they need to, as well as his leg. And he even has swappable legs as well. You can swap out his legs for a pair of bent legs as well, which, you know, look fine, and they will allow him to get a little bit more dynamic posing. His head is on a ball joint, but it's inside of a very simple fitting, which means it doesn't really move at all. You can turn it side to side, but that's really all you're gonna get from it. And in addition to his little blaster here, he comes with a couple other accessories too. Comes with this little bomb looking thing. I forget what this is called. Comes with this bazooka, which is pretty nice. And he comes with an unpainted shield, which is really sad to look at, but you know, you get what you pay for. It's a model kit. Hilariously, he even has his little jet pack in the back, which is a cute detail. But as you can see, there's something going on in the back of his head, and this was one of the things that really sold me on this kit. If you want to push his eyes in, that is pretty nightmarish, but you can then spin that little thing in the back, and now, just like that, we've been able to change his expression. How awesome is this? Again, the decals suck, but you could easily paint in lines if you wanted to. Still, I think this is really cool. But in addition to that large Kerodo, he also comes with this little speeder, which can be used to, of course, pilot the robot itself. But how would you do that? That figure's way too big to go in there, right? Well, that's where you're wrong. See, because this stand is also for this little guy. This is awesome. I just really thought this was adorable that they included this tiny little Kerodo as well as that big one too. Like I said, you get a lot for what you pay here. And this guy is actually articulated. You can see he has little ball joints in both his legs and his arms, and his arms even have a hinge to move his elbow. Look, it's stiff, and I don't want to mess with it too much because I might break it, but it moves, and it moves enough so that you can put him in the cockpit. But additionally, you could put him on the stand as well because this little peg on him can actually put him right there, and then you could spin it around to the front. But just for demonstration's sake, we're going to pop him on the little speeder here and remove that from the stand. And once he's in the speeder, it's time to make him pilot the Kerodobo. And Kerodo is now 
piloting a larger version of himself? Has anybody ever addressed the fact that it's a bit vain that he has a mech of himself? And to be honest, he's a pretty small frog, so this thing can't make him that much bigger. Regardless of that, this looks great. It's hilarious to see those dead eyes both on the robot itself and of course on Kerado Gunso himself. It's hilarious to see those dead eyes on the mech as well as on Kerado Gunso himself. I don't know, I really like this. It's a simple kit and it's far more of a toy than it is a figure, but this is great. I would love something like this as a kid. But we're still not done because you can actually transform the mech, which I've already alluded to. Now, as simple as it is, this is displayed as secret mode in his pamphlet, which I don't know, I guess it kind of just makes it sort of an aerial mode. You just kind of fold his arms back and kick his legs behind him and this creates sort of hover mode, maybe. I gotta be honest, it's pretty boring, but whatever, at least they kind of thought to make it work. Because you can actually use the portion of his fin here can lock into his crest and he just fell out of the cockpit, but whatever, it's cool. This version here was far better thought out. As you can see, he actually has some serious changes to him. The wings are used in an effective way to make it look like a flight mode, and there's even boosters in the back and underneath it as well. What I think I like the most though is that both of his weapons were actually utilized in this mode where you can see they're attached to either arm on both sides. This creates a far more dynamic form out of this flight mode. It really does kind of look more like a jet fighter now. And that's pretty much going to wrap it up. There's really not too much more you can do with him. With great detail and pretty decent articulation, I would certainly recommend this model kit to anybody. It was a lot of fun to put together and the actual posing was a lot of fun too because there's quite a bit included here. I'd consider this almost like a playset because of how much you get. I'm going to give this Kerodogunso Kerodobo model kit an eight out of 10. I thought this was a really nice complete kit. Of course, it lacks detail because it's a model and you're supposed to do that all yourself, but still, you get so much. With Kerodo himself, the robot, the tiny Kerodo, and all the little accessories, there's so much to be done here. There's multiple forms for the mech, and honestly, everything here looks really good despite being a model. For that price point, I would say this is certainly worth anybody picking up, but there's so much more that could be done with this, and unfortunately, I just don't have the time or resource to be able to paint this thing in the way that it would deserve to be painted. But that's where you guys come in, because I know that some of you out there are great model kit assemblers and customizers, so this is going to be a bit of a different video here. Today, we're going to do our first giveaway on the channel. I am going to completely cover shipping and handling, and I will send this to one lucky winner. The only thing you'll have to do is like the video, watch the video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and comment that you want it and that you would like to customize it. Doing all this will get you put on a list. I'll put those names into a generator and have it do a roulette and see who wins. I'm gonna let this run for a whole week, but of course, I really only want people that are entering who want to do this thing justice and paint it up. So in your comment, tell me what kind of paints you use. I'd like to eventually get some of my own and start customizing these myself. But what do you guys think? Make sure to like the video if you did indeed like it and comment and subscribe if you really wanna to try to win this thing as well. You can also join the Discord as well to keep up with everything. And if you want to check out something else, I'm going to link it on screen. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Have an amazing weekend and keep on collecting.